Queen Elizabeth I has been recognized by many as one of England's finest monarchs. This famous ruler ushered in a golden age for her dominion during decades as the country's monarch. The unique porcelain facial complexion favored by Elizabeth I for everyday appearances remains as popular as her remarkable achievements. We know the Queen's pursuit of this trademark look was a personal passion. However, the makeup she constantly used contained various noxious or toxic substances. Therefore, centuries later, many observers have been asking one vital question. Did these cosmetics actually cause the death of Elizabeth I? For European women from the noble and royal classes, using makeup to create a pale complexion was the ultimate beauty statement. In the decades that followed, no woman's fame for a pale white facial tone surpassed Elizabeth I. Her unique appearance inspired women of the upper classes to create similar porcelain facial features as a symbol of their own high status. Though everyone marveling the monarch's ghostly face weren't aware of the high price she was paying to achieve this signature look. This highly educated, multilinguist queen gained the crown in 1558. However, just a few years later on October the 10th, 1562, a young Elizabeth I experienced the classic symptoms of smallpox. With a high fever and other dangerous conditions, it was feared she would not survive. Fortunately, she did manage to escape death, though paid the common cost of permanent pox scars. This made her resort to using heavy makeup in an attempt to hide these skin blemishes and escape disproving stares from her subjects. As a rare female monarch, the look of purity was very important at the time of her reign. Therefore, pox scars simply would not do in her position. Over decades, Elizabeth I used her immense wit and force of will to rule her kingdom while wearing an unforgettable facial complexion created through toxic makeup. The porcelain foundation Elizabeth I displayed to the world and subjects alike required regular use of Venetian ceruse, whose ingredients included white lead and vinegar. It was the toxicity of constant lead exposure which many insist caused Elizabeth I to suffer from lead poisoning. Regular exposure to white lead in her favorite ceruse, thought to be called Spirit of Saturn, could have contributed in large part to the demise of Elizabeth I. Hair loss and depression are classic lead poisoning symptoms which this remarkable monarch was observed to have displayed. In addition, the type of ceruse which Elizabeth I favored allowed white lead to pass through her skin in much higher quantities than any other mixtures used at that time. Upper class and noble women used heavy ceruse to distinguish themselves from common people or peasants. Their pale appearance was meant to show they did not work outside. However, these pretentious practices could kill. Contemporaries at that time often noted the vanity of Elizabeth I and the high priority she placed on appearance. As time progressed, Elizabeth I became so aware of her looks that she banned unflattering portraits of her likeness. It is mentioned by some historians that Sir Robert Cecil, her Secretary of State, wrote, Her Majesty forbids the showing of any portraits which are ugly until they are improved. Painting under such strict orders, artists needed to exercise great caution while portraying her likeness. This included eliminating the effects from decades of toxic, corrosive makeup, natural aging, and pox scars if visible. The result was a perpetually youthful look with the monarch's face covered in Venetian ceruse and red lip shades. In 1575, the Darling portrait was purported to show an approximate likeness to her age at around 41 years and was approved by Her Majesty as a model for future paintings. This made life considerably easier for artists that followed, relying on its approved appearance to style their own portraits of Elizabeth I. Subjects and others would have to wait until after her passing to have a more realistic image of the monarch. At that time, a death mask of Elizabeth I was taken, probably during embalmment. This was a common practice at the time for high-profile people and were used as references for effigies and tombs. To achieve her signature red lips, Elizabeth I used cinnabar lipstick. Unfortunately, regular usage of cinnabar, a common ore of mercury, contributes to skin deterioration. When cinnabar is heated or exposed to rising temperatures, the pure mercury it contains is released and absorbed into the skin or inhaled. At high levels of constant exposure, cinnabar causes anything from loss of sensation and memory to irritability and even death. These were all behavior characteristics observed with Elizabeth I during her reign and another possible cause of her death. It is tragic to note that in response to the continued deterioration of her natural skin, the monarch wore an increasing quantity of ceruse and lipstick. Of course, this accelerated her skin deterioration. 
It is estimated to have taken a few hours to create the porcelain white skin, rosy cheeks, and ruby red lips of Elizabeth I. As she aged, the monarch wore increasing amounts of these toxic cosmetics. As a terrifying consequence, this harmful makeup deteriorated her skin with increased speed. At that time, royalty were style trendsetters, and Elizabeth I deemed her signature look important for protecting her high status. Elizabeth I truly believed that her appearance was a direct reflection on the health of the country. Therefore, with such a high value placed on unblemished skin, many upper-class European women would go to great lengths to remove freckles, pimples, birthmarks, and other skin blemishes just like Elizabeth I. As noted in a quote from William Horman, which appeared in The Vulgaria in 1519, women wiped their face, neck, and pappus with ceruse. Makeup removal in the Elizabethan era could be as deadly as the toxic cosmetics used on a regular basis by noblewomen. Though unlike modern times, Elizabethan women did not have their servants perform nightly makeup removal. In the case of Elizabeth I, she wore her poisoning makeup for at least a week at a time before removing these thick applications, which were reported to be nearly an inch thick in her later years. The Queen's makeup would age and wrinkle her skin after constant absorption for extended periods of time. Then, her makeup would be removed with a peculiar concoction of eggshells, alum, and mercury by her servants. This mixture would also be used as a facial peel to soften skin. Of course, this makeup remover caused further skin irritation, and the mercury would be poisonous. Prolonged exposure to pure mercury and mercury vapor has negative consequences for the nervous, digestive, or immune systems and can be fatal. As she fell into decline, Elizabeth I refused to let physicians examine her. As death drew near, the monarch believed that falling into sleep would hasten her demise. This was indicative of the mental and physical struggles which were causing her immense pain. Therefore, Elizabeth I would stand for hours on end to the point of weary exhaustion. The Queen was also experiencing throat ulcers, fever, pus-filled glands, and loss of appetite while at Richmond Palace. Nevertheless, she would often turn down food and drink, which made her appearance even more gaunt and frail. Elizabeth I, the last Tudor monarch, died on March 24, 1603. There were a number of possibilities as to the cause of her death, though none were conclusive. These included pneumonia, infected tonsils, cancer, and sepsis from the cutting of a ring on her finger, though the most interesting possible cause of her death was blood poisoning through lead-based makeup like her ceruse. 31 years later, ceruse was at last classified as a poison, though unfortunately too late to aid Elizabeth I in her choice of cosmetics. However, after constantly using toxic cosmetics for decades, which included lead, mercury, and other nefarious substances, a startling conclusion was announced in early 2023 as the monarch's likely cause of death. A modern autopsy performed by home office pathologist Dr. Brent Lockyer has concluded pneumonia as the cause of death for Elizabeth I. And while he stated her toxic makeup was not the final cause of death, the pathologist did concede Elizabeth I suffered from chronic lead poisoning. It was noted that at the time of determining her succession, Elizabeth I used a hand gesture to indicate an heir to the English throne. This loss of speech is another indicator of lead poisoning. Today we know that constant lead exposure at even moderate levels can lead to kidney issues, seizures, and even death. Dr. Lockyer's modern-day autopsy, based on symptoms the monarch displayed, indicated Elizabeth I had a fluid buildup in her lungs while her heart was not functioning properly. Dr. Lockyer is certain this lung infection entered into her system, giving the queen blood poisoning. With her heart already compromised, the bronchial pneumonia required her heart to perform at even greater levels to circulate blood, making heart failure a contributing factor. Unfortunately, Elizabeth I did not give permission for a post-mortem to be performed. Even with the recent modern-day autopsy, the Queen's observed symptoms while alive and her regular use of toxic cosmetics over decades still should be considered as possible contributors to her demise. Thank you for supporting us at Medieval to Modern. Please be sure to watch another episode shown at the end of this video. Also be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. I wish you good tidings as we remember that sharing knowledge has been a noble deed throughout the ages.